Hey everybody, welcome back to another video here on the Washington Football Maniacs YouTube channel. Happy Friday to everyone out there, and guess what? We went through round one of the draft, and there was some mixed reviews certainly on Twitter land last night um, about our 16th selection of Emmanuel Forbes, cornerback out of Mississippi State. Undersized, six foot one, 166 pounds. That seems to be the big headline of this guy. Um, Rick Snyder from Rick Snyder's Washington. He wasn't a big fan of the pick either. Um, some fans loved it, some fans didn't. And for me, I mean, I'm I'm always in a well. Let's wait and see what happens because obviously, at the end of the day, it comes down to seeing what these guys do on the field. Um, I, you know, the first thing that come to my mind was Daryl Green, and I know that's in a very ambitious <laughs> um, comparison, but Daryl Green was too small, um, come from small schools, all this stuff. So, you know, it's like there was so much against Daryl Green, right? Yet Daryl Green had a Hall of Fame career. And this guy has, I mean, yeah, he, he's, he's thin, but he's durable. I mean, he, he's played every single game. He didn't miss any games. Um, now, some will argue that a lot of his highlight reel comes off of bad passes and things like that, but um, from what I'm understanding, he was pretty much a shutdown cornerback. Um, so, this article from Oliver Hodgkinson says, uh, Manuel Forbes solidified its place in college football folklore, when he set the NCAA <clears throat> record for interceptions returned for touchdowns during his final season with Mississippi State, an underrated cornerback prospect ahead of that cap campaign, Forbes' scouting report showcases genuine NFL potential, but with one significant question looming ahead of the 2023 NFL draft. A former wide receiver and cornerback of Grenadette, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Grenadilla High School, Forbes tallied eight interceptions with two returned for touchdowns in the senior season alone. Although he started low on some recruiting sites, Forbes ended his high school career as a four-star prospect and the 13th cornerback in the 2020 class. Uh, now, his if we skip down here um, to his strengths at Six foot, which I think it was official is six foot one, um, 166 pounds. Forbes might not have the most physically imposing frame in the 2023 NFL draft class. In fact, the Mississippi State cornerback is historically lightweight at that position. Nevertheless, he possesses a decent height and actually measured in slightly above his listed height. Yeah, six foot one. Forbes often uh, oftentimes showcases that he can be more physical than his slender frame would suggest. Now, I did see that in highlights. Mississippi State cornerback has been able to contend, uh, contend at the catch point against even the most well-put-together wide receivers that he's faced in his college football. Um, and, you know, he has played in the SEC, so that's, that's about as close to the NFL as you can get in college football. He's aided in his ability by two key components of his scouting reports. Clear from studying tape that Forbes is blessed with impressive arm length, and it's quantified that that with his 32 and a quarter measurement at the combine. Length. This length has multiple benefits. Um, talks about the catch point and all that. Um, so. Of course, he's a he's a former wide receiver, so he appears to possess a good understanding of route concepts. 
Um, so it combines intelligence, athleticism, um, and his devastating ability to undercut the pass. Um, showcases an excellent ball tracking ability to make a play on the ball. All right, areas of improvement. While Forbes has an impressive scouting report, uh, there are areas of improvement. Um, let's see. Uh, in, there were several examples of missed tackles while working in space. There was a, a combination of issues ranging from incorrect angles, missed timing of tackle, uh, and uh, some suboptimal techniques demonstrated. Some of these things can be corrected in camp. While he demonstrates good football intelligence on the whole, there's developmental potential here too. In games studied, Forbes routinely failed to navigate traffic well. There were several examples of Mississippi State's cornerback colliding with teammates. This was evident both against the run and in coverage. From a technical perspective as it relates to coverage, Forbes could be more mindful of giving up the inside to a receiver, while he's showcased the ability to force his man to the outside using a combination of length and physicality. There were several instances where uh, Forbes allowing his receiver to get inside and make a play on the ball. I think, you know, though, um, some of this can be overcome in the NFL. But I think also if he if he forces receivers to the inside. Now, here's the thing. We would wind up moving Fuller to slot receivers, and we also have some pretty decent safeties uh, who could also cover the inside as well. I think, honestly... I believe we're going to be okay with having somebody like Forbes on the outside. And while there were certainly, you know, I, I spoke about having the best player available. There, there were other people in the comment section who said that's not always the case. And this may be one of those situations where maybe it wasn't, you know, Forbes probably wasn't the best player available, but it was one of those things where he was the best cornerback and it was maybe it was okay to pick him at that point I don't know some people are saying it was a reach maybe it was um, certainly I was really hoping that Robinson would continue to slide but the Falcons picked up Robinson, I was thankful that he didn't fall to the Eagles. I really thought the Eagles were going to get him. You know, when the Eagles moved up, I was like, oh, see, the Eagles are going to get Robinson for sure. And the Falcons grabbed him. So I was like, oh, at least he's going to the Falcons. That I can handle. He's not going to be in the NFC East. I can handle that. Um, but... I, I will say the upsides to this this pick is the fact that hopefully now we can solidify the secondary. I think the secondary being completely solid, having two corners, having Forbes on the outside and having St. Juice on the other outside and then being able to move Fuller to the slot and then having Curl and... Um, Forced, you know, for the safety positions, I think we're really solid in the secondary. And then, of course, you know, what we have up front on the line there. The only area that I think that we're still kind of sort of questioning how it's going to come about, linebacker. But I think the defense is pretty solid. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, really... The questions, and this this can be a day two answer, obviously. There's still a lot of really good picks out there for day two. But, you know, we still should be able to pick up a tight end. We st still need to be able to pick up some good quality depth on the offensive line. I think there's some good players that we can pick up in, 
you know, the second, third round. So I'm not, I'm not too terrible, terribly against this pick. Um, would have been a pick I would have had. I don't know. But to have somebody who could potentially be a shutdown corner, does his size scare me a little bit? Fred Smoot was a was a little guy too, and Fred Smoot was a baller. Daryl Green was little, and I got to witness his entire career. So, you know, Daryl Green went against a lot of Hall of Famers in his day, and um, you know, Fred Smoot went against some some excellent Hall of Famers and and some excellent wide receivers. So. Let's let's see what happens with Forbes. You know, people were were down on the Dotson pick last year. I don't think that they're as down on him after seeing him play. So let me know in the comments what you think. Um, I'm indifferent. I'm in a wait and see mode. So I'm not a rah rah. Hey, this was a fabulous pick, but I'm not down on it either. So um, let's see what happens, folks. Okay. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Uh, share it with your friends. In that case, also subscribe to this channel, please. I will see you in the next one. Hey, you stayed until the very end. Thank you so much. Watch another one right now.